President Nixon went to school in the South to law school at Duke. He has said that the South is like the rest of the country, but in fashioning a Southern strategy, he is implying that it is not like the rest of the country, that there's a special appeal he can make there more effectively than elsewhere. The question is, what particular South does he have in mind? When he speaks of the South, is he talking about the fast-changing cities with their expanding suburbs and quickening industrial pace, cities like Charlotte? Or is he talking about cities like Charlotte who have all that plus the busing of school children? Or is he talking about the rural South, of blacks and poor white farmers, of wide places in the road, hymn singing and Bible praying? Which South is he talking about? What relationship does it bear to the Southern strategy? Carolina this Saturday. The leading Democratic presidential candidates are former Governor Terry Sanford, who's now the president of Duke University, and George Wallace. Wallace is favored to win. If Wallace wins on Saturday, but does not run as an independent candidate next fall, where will the vote go? The likelihood, at least right now, is that it will go to Richard Nixon. That's the likelihood, but not the certainty. For North Carolina is not the Deep South. It is a varied state, and by Southern standards, fairly liberal in its politics. Yet, Richard Nixon did carry it in 1968, 
and if there's not yet in North Carolina a clear-cut Southern strategy for Republicans, there is a changing political condition for Democrats. NPAC correspondent Peter Kay has been in the state for the past few weeks looking at the political landscape and preparing this report. Uh, I just think that right now uh, the South is uh, moving into a position where it's going to play a very great role in this nation. A and I want these, uh, uh, these fine new leaders in the southern states, uh, I want them to play a role in my administration. That's why I'm going after these states. I, now, I could follow a different strategy. I could just forget the South, as some per people would recommend, and go after only the big states. Uh, but if I did that, that would mean that the South would be out here uh, without feeling to be, that they had a part of the action. Uh, the South, incidentally, is a lot more like the rest of the country than a lot of people would have you believe. I don't go along. After all, I went to school down here uh, 30 years ago, uh, and it was a lot different then from the myth that many of us had about the South. The South, the North, America. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> The Raleigh-Durham Chapel Hill area certainly is not indicative of the uh, Old South. It is probably more, of, more indicative of the New South, and there would be more of a tendency in this area, I suspect, to vote for the Democratic candidate for president or on any national ticket. I think without question this area is, is much more open-minded and is much more committed to the progressive-minded, forward-looking candidates coming on the national scene. One can find here certainly some of the basic Southern attitudes reflected, but not the same kind of commitment to these Southern values and Southern attitudes that have served in a divisive fashion throughout the South in the past. cities do reflect uh, basic, some of the basic attitudes of the South, but uh, they are somewhat uh, an island within the state, and they're somewhat an island within North Carolina. Uh, we might even describe them as the educational center of North Carolina, and maybe even the South. And uh, Senator McCarthy's candidacy had a tremendous impact from the university's point of view on the, on the state election in 1968. Uh, this has certainly stimulated quite a bit of involvement from the university, and the impact has just been tremendous. Now that the students are able to vote in many state and local elections, especially local elections, I uh, expect that the, uh, the degree of the impact will certainly be felt more in elections uh, that will be coming up in the future, starting with 1972. At this particular time, uh, if we relate it to North Carolina, I think that uh, Running on the scene today, the former governor of North Carolina, Tara Sanford, would be much stronger in North Carolina. Uh, across the South, it's very difficult to say. See, the Democratic Party in the South uh, for a long time was basically a populist-type party, appealing to the working classes of, of mainly whites and then, of course, blacks. And over the years, somehow it has tended to get away from that. And this, of course, left a great void for uh, Governor Wallace to move in on. 
there are more than uh, 750,000 potential black voters in the state of North Carolina. There are approximately 326,000 on the books today. Generally, the, the black uh, uh, community in the Raleigh-Durham Chapel Hill area is very, very representative of, of most of the South because it reflects, since most are first-generation escapees from poverty and from the rural areas of North Carolina and the South. Sickness, sorrow, death are indeed the common lot of us all. But it seems that there are some who have been called upon to bear more of this kind of experience than the rest of us. To a large extent, this is what the black experience is all about in this country. An experience of hurt, sorrow, and death. And to a large extent, Hyatt Edwards symbolized that experience. A young man at the age of 24, whose life was snatched away in an automobile accident. At the very time he was struggling and reaching and hoping and working for the better things of life that seemingly constantly escaped him. We know that there were in the past certain intimidations, but for the most part it's been a matter of blacks not really having candidates that attracted their attention, that they felt were worthy of their support or necessarily increase the enthusiasm and increase the number who turn to the political process. The Democrats cannot afford to continue to take anything for granted. I think this has been basically the problem with the Democratic Party in the South, that it has started to take so much for granted, mainly because the Democratic Party for a long time was the party in the South, uh, particularly here in North Carolina. Uh, and in so doing, it has lost its foothold. It is losing uh, ground very fast. And for the party to continue to, to uh, not address itself to some of the basic uh, needs and continue to try to interpret what it is the constituents are looking for and, and what kind of leadership it's desiring, uh, it will not survive as a party and will soon find itself in, in great, great disarray, much greater disarray than it finds itself in now. I say that what we should do is to move forward on a basis which just puts primary emphasis on the quality of education. For example, let's, let's take the whole matter of busing. I'm against busing. I believe the major issue here in Charlotte is the forced and cross-busing of our school children. I think many people here were very disappointed that uh, the Nixon administration did not take action uh, and participate as strongly in the Supreme Court case affecting us here earlier. But I think at this point that uh, many people feel it better late than never that he tried to do something. came to Charlotte about 10 years ago. Uh, I'm originally from Long Island in New York, and uh, my wife Harriet is from Massachusetts. What about the busing? Were you directly affected by the uh, court order to bus for racial uh, purposes? Yes, we had one child who would have had to been bused from his elementary school to a school in the inner city. And what happened? We put him into private school. We wouldn't have him bused for the year. We have three elementary schools within less than a three-mile radius of our home. Uh, our child, under this court order, was forbidden to attend any school nearby. Uh, I got into the car one quiet Sunday afternoon and drove directly to the school he was assigned to, and I, 
I got 9.2 miles. It's down in a, in a dilapidated uh, industrial area down just off the heart of the city. Uh, rather undesirables uh, hang out in and about the school. Well, the school uh, was relatively new. Uh, it was not, uh, it was about three years old, uh, but the area is run down. What housing is left there, uh, much of it has been condemned. Uh, uh, windows get broken, one thing or another. Uh, for example, uh, this particular school had no fence around the playground area, and the, the playground was elevated three feet off the street, and this was dangerous. A child could fall off. There's a, uh, uh, there's a fence there now, because when the white students came in, the white parents insisted something be done about it, and it was done. This is wrong, obviously. For the white children to come, we uh, got basketball courts and had better times. And, uh, and, um, and it helped them more if she work. And we had more fun. Had more fun with white children. See, it don't seem right with this plain colored children. You play with the, you can play with color all the time, see. You want to get around and meet new friends and all that. But I think you can attack these things in a frontal way without uh, uh, transporting kids helter and skelter and all over the countryside because somebody feels that uh, black and white skins when rubbed together make better kindling or something. I understand the philosophy that uh, uh, is, is spoken every once in a while. That is that black children were bused past white schools for years and years, and this was unfair. Therefore, as, uh, as a motive of, of uh, evening things up, so to speak, or perhaps uh, you might use the word revenge, uh, that's not very kind perhaps, but uh, now we're going to do the same to you. Well, in my view of the law, two wrongs don't make a right. I don't think the issue is, is black versus white. I, I think the issue is the background that, that the children bring into the school, uh, whether they have books at home, whether they're encouraged uh, to learn, whether they're encouraged to read, uh, whether they're encouraged to, uh, to continue their education at home. This is what makes the real difference. And uh, uh, sure, there's a fear in, in many middle-class people's minds that their children's education is going to be retarded or held back. Uh, I think many people in Charlotte feel that uh, for the last two years with the upheavals and the tension uh, and the difficulties of this situation that uh, the normal educational process has, has not progressed the way it should. Uh, we were very disappointed that uh, we think this, we, this community got short shrift when the case went to the Supreme Court, that the government did not step in and carry the arguments they should have. Uh, at least they're trying now to a degree. Uh, not uh, perhaps in all respects the way we'd like them to. But if I think about uh, what uh, Senator Muskie, for example, said after the Florida primary, how could I vote for a man who, simply because he's uh, uh, come out poorly in the results, castigates the voters and says that uh, only their basest motives were involved? Uh, doesn't he trust the American people to vote the way they feel? Is this unrealistic or unfair for people to vote? Uh, in a way that they think is right. I resent a comment like that, and I, th I, I couldn't possibly vote for a man who made a statement like that. Uh, Senator Humphrey, he doesn't know what he stands for. He, he says uh, busing isn't, uh, is, is rather bad in, in, in one day, and then the next day he says, well, maybe it's not so bad, maybe it's really necessary. Uh, it seems to me it depends what side of a state line he happens to be standing on. Uh, uh, George Wallace? Uh, he's pricking at, at, at what the real issues in this country are. Uh, but he's got a terrible background. And uh, uh, he's got a background that uh, most people uh, of a moderate view uh, find very uncomfortable with. So uh, uh, then I can just go down the line. I don't know of a Democrat that I could get very enthusiastic about. So uh, when all is said and done, you're for... I, I, I'm going to have to vote for Nixon, as things are right now, because he's uh, the only hope, is, is in my mind, uh, of it grappling with, with some of the things that we feel strongly about. It's such a joy to know that Christ is living in my soul. On Sunday morning, I was 
that say that you could find very many people right around here other than in church. Someday, thank God, I know that I will reach heaven's goal. What a wonderful way to live, to walk the Christian way. What a wonderful way to live, to walk the Christian way. Gospel singing in, in our part of the country is the gospel within itself. It's just like a man preaching. And the Hart family is our favorite gospel singers. In fact, they belong to the church that I go to. What a wonderful way to live the walk the Christian way. What a wonderful way. I think most of the people around here would go for Wallace. I'd say 75, 80 percent of them. Let's talk for a minute about the people around Greene County here. What kind of people are they? How do they make their living? Well, most of them right now are farmers. But for the last few years, they have gone factory a lot, of, you know, a lot more so than they have been for the last 20 years. For the last 10 years, I'd say half of the population, almost half of the population, is going to factories for the lack of prices in labor and in the prices in your product that you raise, things like that. What kind of farmers are they? Tobacco, cotton, and corn, which we had, we had to go all the way out of cotton because it was so cheap and labor was so high, we had to just let cotton go. Where do you get your labor for harvesting? Well, it's migrated labor out of Mississippi, mostly. Personally, I use uh, Mississippi hands because right in this section, they haul them in on buses. You have to have a, a, a little house. They really have certain requirements. You get health board and so forth and so on. You have to have it screened. You've got to have a stove, so forth and so on for them to cook. And well, this is hard for me to understand that seeing as how you have to do all of that, why don't you just use your labor from around here? Surely you have plenty of possible agricultural labor right here in North Carolina. Well, you've got it. That's where you get back you've to your You've got it, but you can't use it. But there's plenty, plenty of people just as strong as the ones I use out of Mississippi, just as able to work as them out of Mississippi. But he's drawing a welfare check or some check of some kind Social Security, and you can't hire him. In other words, he's making more money sitting on his doorsteps on his porch or somewhere fishing than he can make with me, so why work? You see what I mean? I see what you mean, but what can Governor Wallace do about that? <laughs> well, we were hoping that he could change these laws and things to that effect, that it would be changed. The government's policies on welfare and on school integration have they created racial problems for you here yeah i think so i think they've created a lot of problems as far as, the, as far as the farmer is concerned well i think welfare has took the labor away from the farmer if a guy has been down and you're on top you keep giving him and keep giving him and keep giving him. And after a while, he's going to be on top and you're going to be under the bottom. It's a matter of which you'd rather be, on top or under the bottom. Is that what it comes down to? That's here? what it comes down to. In other words, if he quits whenever he gets even with the white man, if, whenever we get on the same level, if he quits, okay, that's fine. But common sense, and he'll tell you himself, that it is not going to quit then. Because he's mad with you from his fourth or fifth generation, even back further than he even knows. So why say he's going to quit when you know he ain't? People is the same as hogs, cows, dogs. In other words, they're a breed of, of something. Mm -hmm. In other words, you've got a good breed over here. You've got a sorry breed over here. In other words, a white child, just say for instance, a white child is uh, in a little higher standing, a little better education, a little better living than the colored person. 
why would I want my daughter to marry a colored girl, or why would I want my son to marry a colored girl, and decrease my grandchild when they could marry a white girl and hold on our level? Why do I want them decreased? That, that don't make good sense to me. Is this behind your being so upset with government? You think that government's beginning to push people into this sort of thing? Naturally they are. They're, they're pushing it into us. They're putting it in our schools. Whenever they grew up together, mingled all that, naturally they're going to fall in love with each other. So then you've got colored marrying white. You've got white marrying colored. And uh, I think that's decreasing our white race. But all is said and done, do you think that may be one reason that Governor Wallace has an appeal because deep down he thinks the same thing? I think he's for the colored people as much as he is for the white people. But I think the Lord intended for us to be separate, and I think Wallace intends for us to be separate. Assume for a minute that Governor Wallace does not get the nomination and he does not run on a third party ticket, and it's President Nixon against some other Democrat. I think they'll change. I think they'll go right, right the other. I think they'll go 75, 80 percent Nixon. Same as the Wood, 85, 80 percent Wallace. I think they'll just change right over and go Republican, where they would have gone Democrat if Wallace had a, got a nominated. Well, let me ask you the same question personally. Uh, who would you go to vote for in the in the primary? Wallace. Now, who would you vote for in November if Wallace wasn't running? Nixon. If he wasn't or was? Was not. If he was not running, I'd vote for Nixon. Uh, we don't think George Wallace would be in the race. But if he is, we feel like the president will get somewhere between 40 and 45 percent of the vote and win. Uh, if Wallace is not in the race, it's going to be uh, a landslide. Somewhere between 60 and 65 percent of the vote. Our uh, polls show that uh, we'll get somewhere around uh, 78 percent of Wallace's 68 vote. The Eastern North Carolina uh, voter, and by that I mean about uh, 40 percent of the, of the registered voters in North Carolina, are primarily extreme conservatives. And these people, by all rights, uh, should be Republicans. Uh, they should be voting for the president. Uh, Wallace uh, got about 50 percent of this vote in the general election in 1968. And we feel like that uh, this is one of the primary reasons that these people have moved over t uh, to the president or are going to move over and vote for him is that, you know, they compromised their political morality. They, they went part of the way in 68, and we feel like that they're going to cross on over this time and, and vote for our, uh, uh, not only for the president, but for our Republican candidate for the Senate and for governor. With Mr. Nixon so strong in North Carolina, what is the constituency left to the Democrats? Well, believe it or not, there are some liberals in North Carolina. Uh, there are some people that believe that we should cut and run in Vietnam and that would support McGovern or whatever, but there aren't many. Uh, our polls show that the president would get about 25% uh, of the black vote against uh, uh, Humphrey or Muskie, not Kennedy now, but Humphrey or Muskie, so that would leave 75% of the black vote. And there are some... Uh, knee-jerking Democrats, the, the Democrats in North Carolina that uh, great-grandfather voted for, voted Democrat, and they tell a story that my grandfather would turn over in his grave if, uh, if he knew that I'd voted for a Republican. Of course, uh, uh, he would also turn over in his grave if uh, he saw the kind of Democrats that these people were voting for. So that's, that's about the constituent that, that uh, he could expect. Is there really a Southern strategy that the president is following here? Well, uh, it's the president. I think the president summed it up a lot better than I could. He said that uh, if uh, treating the South uh, like it's part of the United States is being guilty of uh, having a Southern strategy, then I'm guilty. Uh, what, what the president has done is he has uh, given us a, a chance to become part of the United States for the first time in most of our lifetimes, and, and I enjoy it, and I'm, I'm sure that's has uh, a lot to do with the president's popularity in North Carolina. The phrase, a Southern strategy, has a nice ring to it, suggesting tidiness and order, implying that if George Wallace does not run as a third-party candidate, then the South will be Nixon country. 
The problem, however, is that it's all too tidy and too neat in a political year in which political icons are being smashed right and left. Example, throughout the northern primaries, we've seen this phenomenon. Many Wallace voters telling pollsters their second choice is McGovern, and many McGovern voters saying Wallace is their second choice. Does this mean that if McGovern gets the Democratic nomination, he can get the Wallace vote in states like North Carolina, even with his views on school busing? We don't know, nor do we think does anyone else. If there's a strategy this year, Southern or otherwise, it should probably fall under the category of question all assumptions, question all strategies, on both sides of the Mason-Dixon line. Next week, Robert McNeil and Peter Kay will explore how San Diego won and lost the Republican convention. Until then, this is Sander Van Oker for Impact. A Public Affair is a production of MPACT, the National Public Affairs Center for Television. I'm Robert McNeil with Peter Lissagor of the Chicago Daily News, Neil McNeil of Time Magazine, Charles Cordry of the Baltimore Sun, and a guest fourth correspondent analyzing the major news events of the week on Washington Week in Review from NPACT, the National Public Affairs Center for Television. Mm -hmm.